Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time we finished up exploring Grunty Industries and in this episode, we're going to go ahead and make our way over to our next world in the game. But before we do that, we want to actually make our way over to Pine Grove. This is because right before we went to Grunty Industries, we decided to do a little bit of cleanup here in Banjo-Tooie. And by doing so, we found ourselves something very interesting. So if we take a look at our object and item screen, as you can see, we have ourselves one Mega Globo. There's only one of these in the entire game, and there's only one person in the whole game that can go ahead and utilize this thing. And conveniently for us, that person is here in the Isle of Hags. So let's go ahead and pay Hubba here a visit. Me much surprised. You have the legendary Mega Globo. Want to give the Hubba? Yes, we do. Sure, I'll just throw it in. Magic ready. Jump in Wamba Pool. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's jump in the pool. Wamba call this dragon. But what's changed? Kazooie now big heap dragon, burn many baddies. Now think you try something new. Oh no, she's off on one again. L-O-G-S, lost challenges. What? First a dragon and now this? That must be for nuts and bolts. Yeah, so uh, that is actually an interesting line. She does say something different here in the Xbox 360 version because this is kind of something for stop and swap for nuts and bolts as well. So it's a little bit different in the N64 version as you're seeing here. Definitely a weird dialogue difference. But now that we have ourselves a dragon we can go ahead and use, there's a lot of interesting things about Dragon Kazooie we can go ahead and mention. For starters, her basic attack now has changed from just attacking people with her beak to setting things on fire. So if we get near this little minion here, I can just go ahead and burn him to a crisp, but it's a little awkward to use because it's a very slow attack. But more importantly is if I swap over to my fire eggs, notice how when I'm firing, I don't lose any of my eggs anymore. As the Dragon Kazooie transformation you have an infinite supply of fire eggs. This is a huge deal because fire eggs are one of the more useful egg types in the game, especially for puzzle solving. So having an infinite number of fire eggs now definitely makes things a lot easier. But let's go ahead and make our way back over the Jiggy Wiggy's temple here because we got another puzzle to solve. Let's go ahead and open our way to World 7. So here you can see this puzzle is very interesting looking. Looks like we're going inside a volcano in this area. It definitely looks like a hot and dangerous place here for Banjo. So this one will have to definitely be careful just traversing in this world, just for what we can see at least. This is one of the more difficult puzzles to put together because it's a very dark background that we're kind of working with. So it's a little hard to line up these puzzle pieces right away. because a lot of the puzzle pieces kind of look the same at first. Or at least it depends on what camera angle Banjo is using here in this area. Sometimes if you're just looking at one area that's basically all the same color, this puzzle would be kind of annoying to put together for that reason. But there's really not that much left of the puzzle, so we shouldn't have too much of a problem now. Especially if Banjo just stays in place. This definitely makes things a lot easier. But there you go. That's the puzzle completed. And now we are going to be opening our way to World 7. So an interesting thing to note about this world, this is actually the point in the game now where we actually had a chance to see the opening entrance to this world earlier in our adventure. This is because once you get to Grunty Industries, this is where your path stops for trying to follow Grunty. So the entrance to our next world here is actually back in the Clifftops area in the Isle of Hags. We've actually activated the walkway over here before as we needed to go into this area to get ourselves a Globo. So we've seen the entrance to World 7 for quite some time. This is now the first time we're able to actually get into the world and start exploring it. That's very interesting to note. 
But we definitely have enough puzzle pieces to go ahead and solve another puzzle, but I'm going to keep my jiggies for myself. Thank you. We'll come back later. So now with that done, let's go ahead and get our way back to the silo, make our way over to the cleft top area. And before we go into World 7 here, I want to go ahead and get me some things. So first things first, there's actually a Jinjo for us to collect here in the cleft top area. So what we need to do is we need to make our way over here because behind this building are some claw shoes for us to go ahead and use. So we definitely want to grab these because here near the Jolly Roger Lagoon entrance, as you can see, there are footprints up this wall. So that means we can go ahead and climb up. If Kazooie can actually stick to the wall, that is. Up here, we got ourselves a Black Jinjo. We're getting there. Six out of nine Black Jinjos. It's a pretty interesting number there. If you take away the slash, it's uh, very suggestive. But let's just go ahead and make our way into Jolly Roger Lagoon because there's one thing I actually want to go ahead and do here. So I want to go ahead and separate Banjo-Kazooie here because Kazooie can actually do something in this world now. So first things first, just to show the difference between normal Kazooie and Dragon Kazooie, as you can see, when Kazooie separates, she also uses her Fire Breath here, so it's the same thing as when she was paired with Banjo. So not very that much different there, but I do want to go ahead and make a note of just the separate attacks, because they are separated right now. Might as well. But we actually want to come down here into this area of Jolly Roger Lagoon, because we got this sad little guy we couldn't help before. This guy here needs our help to hatch his egg still. Still no sign of him hatching. I'm getting more worried by the minute. How do you know it's a him? It better be. I already got 19 girls. That's a lot of girls. I hope for your sake this is also a male. Let's just go ahead and help hatch this egg. Thank you so much. Wait, something looks odd. Oh no, he's upside down. You mean he's tipped up? That's not funny. Please help him. Why well, we burn him to a crisp? Oh, that's much better. I found this buried in the sand. It's yours. Now, come along, son. I'll take you to meet all your sisters. Look at that cute little baby crawl to the water. It's moving so slow. So, why did Tip Tup outrun his child? That was a little concerning. And more importantly, where did they both go? They were here a minute ago, and then we turned the camera, and then they're just gone. Those two move really fast for turtles. But there you go. That's a jiggy we couldn't get here for a while in this area. We technically could have came back here the second we learned the hatch ability in Pterodactyl Land, but... I figure we're going to wait until we're ready to come back to this area, and this is a good enough time to go ahead and do so, simply because we have to be in this general vicinity anyways to enter our next world, so it gets that little bad tracking trip done. So that's that. Now we have everything done we need to have prepared in order to enter our next world in the game. So I'm also going to just show this off real quick. If you learn your little bashing move from the stop and swap stuff, you can still use that with Dragon Kazooie. It's just a little weird that it can interrupt the fire breath, so it's weird, but it still works. But welcome to our next world in the game, Hail Fire Peaks. Two years! Finally, I made it to the warmth of the lava world with a belly full of water. And our camel friend there from the first game is very happy to finally be in this lava world. It did take him quite some time to get here, so I do have to give him credit for actually sticking it out and making it this far. Here we got ourselves a warp pad, so we definitely want to hit that right away. And here, this is some very interesting looking water, because as you can see, it has some steam coming off of it. And if we try to get in this water, we burn ourselves to get thrown immediately back up. So yeah, don't step foot in that, that is not safe for us to go ahead and walk inside of. Warning! Trespassers in the exceedingly hot water 
are likely to be cooked. Well, we definitely found that one out the hard way. Hey, I don't recall you paying for a tour of my volcano. I'm gonna burn your furry hide. Good luck trying to burn me in a cave. It's gonna be kind of difficult to do. So yeah, there's this dragon that's in this world that kind of wants to murder us because we're trespassing. So uh, yeah, let's be careful where we're walking for that reason. We don't want to get burned or crisp. Every once in a while, something will shoot down from the sky because that is that dragon trying to kill us. So anytime you can get indoors, definitely do so to keep yourself safe. And speaking of which, let's go ahead and get inside the volcano. What better place to go than inside the actual burning volcano to get away from a dragon? What do you mean it's not safe? And I can burn her crest in here. At least I don't burn from a burning rock hitting my forehead from just nowhere. That's a little safer, right? Well, anyways, this area here is very interesting because inside the volcano, we have a limited amount of air we can work with. Luckily for us, we have double the air since we saved our little goldfish back in the very beginning of the game, so... We have more than enough air to go ahead and make it through this entire section without worrying about dying. But if you feel like you're not going to have enough air, just leave this area and then return inside the volcano and continue where you left off with these switches. But there's a certain amount of switches we need to hit here, all in a very specific order. And once we do so, then we'll get a reward for doing all this. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera around here, flap my wings to be very safe, be very careful of these devil creatures. They're very interesting creatures here in this world. Looks like that's our final switch we need to hit, and as you can see, it's got a jiggy on it. So now we see what we're going to be working our way towards this entire time. We're working our way towards a jiggy, and I like those. Let's go ahead and climb up here and hit this switch to reveal our jiggy. As soon as this jiggy is revealed, two more platforms appear so we can make our way over to the other side of this room and read those signs. So that's another interesting thing about this. Let's go ahead and make our way over to those signs and see what they have to say. Only a ball of great size can start the oil drill. Well, that's good to know. We'll keep that in mind for later. Hot Link's cold in the skull and wigwam. Uh, that's a weird cryptic hint. I'll keep that in mind too, I guess. When things get too hot, remember your bearded buddy. All right, this is just getting weirder by the second. Those are all hints about things for this world, but as you can tell, they get kind of cryptic, so they're not the most helpful hints, but they do foreshadow some of the events that you'll be doing in Hailfire Peak, so do definitely keep that in mind. Now, as you see on the other side of this cave, there was a honeycomb piece for us to grab, but it's out of reach, so we can't get it right now. We can get it later, so we'll have to keep that in mind, and we'll have to make our way over to the other entrance to that cave, so... Again, we'll keep that in mind and get it later, but for now, let's go ahead and continue exploring more hair fire peaks here. So, I want to keep on making my way over in this direction. And here, these cracks in the wall are very interesting because as you can see, these are fire hands coming out trying to grab us. So we want to be very careful about those hands. Because if you're not paying attention, they'll just come out and burn you. So we want to be very careful, but if you use Wonder Wing, you kill the hands immediately. So. There's also that to keep in mind. But here we got ourselves a warp pad and split up pads. So let's actually use the split up pads because there's something for Banjo by himself down below where we just came from. So we're gonna jump down here, take a little bit of fall damage, which really isn't that big of a deal. Remember, we can sleep in our backpack to get our health back. So it's not really that big of a deal if we take any extra little damage because I can just wait things out and get my health right back. So there we go, we're basically at full health. I'm gonna jump around in this hand, because I gotta wait for the second one anyway, so I might as well get around one. Make it a little bit easier to get to note. And this hand is a jerk. They put it in a really bad spot. Over here is Jam Jars. He has a new move to teach, so let's go ahead and learn it. This one makes you safe and small that fit through gaps in a wall. First hold LT or RT, and then press right stick down. Protected in liquids, you will be. That'll be all. Dismissed. Man, I swear, you get worse every time you try the rhyme jam charge. Just stop what you're behind. So, to demonstrate what we were just told, if we jump down here to the very beginning of Hailfire Peaks, and we enter our backpack, if this guy doesn't try to murder us, 
now we're in our small little backpack here walking around and nothing's hurting us surprisingly but I can actually walk into this water and it's not gonna burn me now so this is a very interesting thing I'm not sure how our backpack doesn't just burn to a crisp in this hot water but it can survive down here that water's far too hot for our swimming pool yeah, so actually this switch here links to Jolly Roger Lagoon. This can actually help our pig friends we met in that world, but unfortunately they can't use this water right now because it's way too hot since it's inside a volcano, so we'll keep that in mind for later. For now, if I get out of my backpack, I do take some damage, but as you can see, it does throw me straight back out to where we came from. So it did save me some time to actually do that, so definitely useful to know. For now, let's go ahead and make our way back to the upper area here in the fireside. And let's go ahead and merge back with Kazooie. As we can see over here, there's some more notes for us to collect, so I'm just gonna use Wonder Wayne to get rid of these two hands. Make our journey around this area a lot easier. But here, we have ourselves a building. We're not gonna go in there just yet, but we'll keep that in mind for later. Over here, on the other hand, we wanna make our way into this area here because this is actually gonna be a shortcut back downwards, so. If we can go ahead and turn our camera around and immediately fall. As you can see, we're right next to a Jiggy. That's kind of convenient, but we can't get in there right now. What I wanted to show is that these steps lead to that pathway we just came from. So that's an easy way to get up the mountain here. But I did kind of just fall straight down, so you didn't get to see that really that easily, but you get the idea. It's fine. So for now, we actually want to go ahead and make our way onto the other side of the mountain. We explored the right side from the beginning, and now let's go ahead and make our way over to the left. I do want to show this though. If you jump down here for whatever reason, you can go ahead and make your way into this little cave, which brings you right back to the top. So that's a little shortcut between the upper and the bottom path there. Definitely keep that in mind. Here I'm going to go ahead and wonder wing my way through all these burning hands. Just murder all the hands. And here we got ourselves Mumbo's Hut. We'll definitely want to keep that in mind, but right now we're not ready to use his services just yet. If we make our way into this cave over here, it takes us into this area here, Fire Peaks. And we want to go ahead, first take this guy out because he's in my way. And let's jump over here, hit this switch. This switch is very important to hit because this makes a shortcut from that tent over to this section of Halo Fire Peaks. So if you need to get back over here in a hurry, I have a much easier way to get back over here. Nice little shortcut. If we make our way over to the other side here, we see ourselves a Globo just kind of walking around here. So let's go ahead and grab this Globo. That'll definitely help. And here, if we go ahead and look inside, we can see that there is a flight pad there. So if we can go ahead and get this guy all angry on the top of the mountain, he will try to shoot at us. And conveniently for us, one of those fireball blasts will actually break open this stone building. So now we can go ahead and use this flight pad and we can fly around Hail Fire Peaks. So that is a really helpful thing, so let's go ahead and take advantage of this flight pad. Go in the first person just to make things a little bit easier. And up there, on top of the volcano, that is where this beast is shooting us from. So if we fly all the way to the top here, right here we have another flight pad, we wanna go ahead and fly down, but more importantly, in here is that beast that's been shooting us. So we're gonna go ahead and make our way into this area and confront this monster in the next episode. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we'll make our way into this cave and fight the dragon attacking us here in Hailfire Peaks. I'll see you guys next time.